And I'm not trying to make you stop thinking of Charlie from High Five because hell, I am proud of that girl. I was 17 years old. I'd never flown on a plane. I just knew that I wanted to do something with singing, dancing and acting. That's it. That's all I ever loved. And I got an audition and my mum drove me three hours to Sydney to do the audition. And um, I left there going, I just had to do everything that I've ever learned, like singing, dancing, acting. I just loved it. And the next minute we were touring nine months of every year, packed out concerts and everybody knew my name. It, it was just incredible. Mind blowing for a little kid that hadn't even flown on a plane. I had been dancing since I was two years old I loved singing it's funny because we found a letter and I said when I grow up I want to be singing on stage I want to have something about a horse like I want to run around the stage being a horse which I've done on high five before and I want to win logies like I wrote that the only thing I did write as well is I want people while I'm dancing on stage I want people to throw money at me now we know what that kind of means and I haven't done that yet so <laughs> But I ticked everything else off that little Charlie list. And I guess when you have that clear focus, uh, even though I was a country kid, um, you know, so far from the city, that's what I wanted. And that was my target, my focus. And it was really interesting because I went to a performing arts high school and also my sister is a way better singer, dancer, actor than me. Um, but I think I got it through just she never giving up no matter how many no's you got like I did all that extra work home and away and all that sort of stuff as a kid growing up just for experience um, and a lot of people when you get no's stop but I think if you get a fire inside you and a passion and you just know that's what you're supposed to do you really don't have a backup plan and sometimes that's kind of cool I it was incredible actually I mean I was so young and a lot of them had all had experience in the industry they're all professionals really so um for me watching them you know like it was amazing but what the trick was apparently because they did put us with other people um and then the five of us were put together and we were around the piano with our composer Chris um Harriet and he said magic happened when we sang together and that was it I'm the person that you saw on TV. I wasn't actually playing a character and I probably didn't know how at that age to go into some deeper, darker place within my acting. In our very first series, our director kept saying, more energy, more energy, give us more. And it's really funny because Nathan and I took that really personally and we just kept going up and up and up. I was ready to explode if you watched that first series. I, had, I was like, hi everyone, like I was that excited. At the end of the series, we were at a rap party and he said, oh, I was never talking to you two, by the way. Oh, so we just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it wasn't even us that was supposed to keep getting more energy. But you know what? You live and you learn. Second series, Charlie was then 18, a lot more calmer and cooler. It got better from there on. <laughs> Definitely the youngest because you can't not. I mean, I think Kel was like already 26 and she was a pop star, for goodness sake, in Teen Queens. And they had musical theatre careers, everyone. And they were all rocking out and with bands and it was just completely I'm in high school just finishing my HSC it's incredible for me to have gone through high five and then when I interview celebrities when I did my next job um, on radio as an entertainment reporter how many celebrities loved high five so for example I was interviewing One Direction in Ireland they flipped out um they'd gone to the concert and the boys were just like, when I was interviewing them, they're like, oh my God, you're Charlie. And I'm thinking, oh my God, you're One Direction. You're like 1D. I did try and leave at the eight year mark because I thought that was like um, a good time for me. And I'd been um, offered a couple of other things. And I thought maybe this is my chance. And 10 or 9 said, no, 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 no. You're not going anywhere. Um, and signed me quickly up to another two years. And then I got to leave at the round number of 10 with the lady who created the series. So Helena and I left at exactly the same time as they then on sold it to a, um, another network, another production company. So um, it, it was really nice. Those last two years were actually my favourite because although we did the same tour most every year, um, I got to say goodbye to the kids. It was like I knew that was coming to an end. So it almost re-energised me um, to go again. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, I mean, it's so much easier now with Messenger and everything. I mean, I remember I went through a stage of not seeing um, them that often. I ran into, I think it was Nathan, like in a Melbourne train station while passing underneath in the city. And it's like you just saw them. You talk as if you saw them yesterday. And I think... The best way to describe it is probably brother and sister relationship for everyone. You can't be together that many years and not reconnect as soon as you see each other. When it was Kelly's birthday this year in May, I mean it when I say like, I'll just love her forever. 
Like, you know, th that's the easiest thing to just say about. And that's what you'd usually only say about siblings when you haven't seen someone for like five years, but you still will say to them, oh my goodness, I love you so much. I love you forever. That's the way you talk. Uh, when I left High Five and I was doing some presenting and I had someone say to me, "It, you just so much sound like your character. And even though that was you, um, you sound always sound like you're about to present like for a child. And I quickly went to NIDA and I had some lessons with this great guy at NIDA and he helped me vocally find my speech level. So I was talking like this by the end of 10 years, I was up here and I didn't come down. Um, and then you find your real voice. And I guess that's when Charlie grew up. It was on breakfast radio. I was talking about opinions, um, all different topics. And then you discover who you are. And thankfully that's what's kept my career going so long is that I evolved. I don't care if people recognize me for high five and I'm not trying to make you stop thinking of Charlie from high five because hell, I am proud of that girl. Most of all, I'm proud of what we the, the legacy that High Five left. People want to tell you the impact they've had in their lives and what a damn awesome thing that you had a job that impacted people that they remember when they're adults or they remember that their child only ate vegetables because you sang about them or they'd only go to sleep if the Charlie um, Sleepy song was on. Was, you know, there's all these stories that give me goosebumps that I was a part of that and how blessed that life was. And now to be able to show my children is just incredible. It's absolutely amazing and they think everyone's mum's on a children's show which is pretty cool so um <laughs> I don't know how I tell them they're not I didn't have a choice because my mum has saved every bit of merchandise we were given one piece of every merchandise she has boxed them up in the hope of having a grandchild and boy or girl they were going to be raised in high five dresses they think everyone has high five sneakers high five backpacks bedspreads lamps curtains they look like they're obsessed, but my mom just wants to use them because they've been boxed up so long. Yeah, I'm watching it from a whole new perspective now. So yeah, they had no hope. They were going to be high five fans. Although I was a little bit upset when my um, one-year-old kept asking for Emma, like constantly, as soon as she woke up, she was like, Emma, Emma, Emma. And I was like, seriously, really, really? Not mummy? And she's like, Emma, Emma, Emma. So I had to buy her an Emma doll. And at least my three-year-old has all my dolls. <laughs> And it's not, this sounds really stuck up. It was just that I still had that, come on, love high five more than wiggles <laughs> in my brain. But now I'm like, of course, there was never that rivalry. I just played on it when I had kids. It's funny you should say that now because my girls want to go to a high five concert. So I've been chatting a lot with Nathan and he's really up for it. I'm really up for it. And they're like, let's do it. And it definitely could work. So I've spoken to a lot of people and we can make it work. I really do think it could happen maybe for next year or something. Um, but absolutely think that this could happen. Well, I'm doing Getaway still, which um, obviously I was saying I started since I was 21, but doing more shows with them. So I, it is like a dream job. I feel very fortunate to say High Five was a dream job. Getaway is a dream job. Dancing with the Stars was a dream job for goodness. So I've had so much um, fun, but still doing Getaway is beautiful now that I have children as well. And um, getting to experience things with them. I do have a book though that's um, coming out, which is very exciting. I can't tell you anything yet, but I will very soon. I'll keep you posted. It's very exciting.